Hey guys, I am DC, your host of Barside Giant Live, and we are so happy that you guys chose to hang out here with us tonight. Not at the very cool vocal studios in Dallas, but at uh, Mi Casa, because, uh, you know, that uh, coronavirus thing <coughs> has got us all at home. So uh, we're doing my show from uh, my place. <coughs> Yep. And uh, my guest is at his. So we're keeping that, uh, we're keeping that uh, safe distance apart. Even Jay is alone at the studio. So he's the only one at the studio tonight. And I am thankful he's here for all that technical assistance he provided me earlier. But uh, guys, we are excited to be here. We're excited that you're here. You know, this show happens at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time every Thursday and features some of the very best original singer-songwriters here in this country. By the way, you can now follow my shows on Apple iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, Twitch, Spreaker, Google Play, TuneIn, and Deezer. Or just look anywhere there's cool content and we'll probably be there. In fact, if you happen to be listening to us right now, just the audio as a podcast, then you can go to vocalnow.com, and that's vocal, misspelled intentionally with a K, V-O-K-A-L now.com, and you should see us live. Just click on the bar side job image under streaming now, and you can actually see us if you desire. Also, all of my content is on demand on my YouTube channel at youtube.com, Barside Jive Live. And remember, guys, that Barside Jive is sponsored by the legendary zoo. The zoo. On vocal. The world's best rock and roll can be streamed 24-7-365 at vocalnow.com. Tonight, I do have singer-songwriter Joe James all the way from Austin, Texas, right here in my little studio, but first... Duran Duran's John Taylor reveals he battled the coronavirus. Who would have known that it affected Duran Duran just as well as so many other people? Duran Duran's co-founder and bassist John Taylor has revealed that he was diagnosed with the coronavirus only three weeks ago. Happily, he has since recovered. The bassist revealed the news in a post on the band's official Facebook page, which went something like this. Dear friends of mine, after giving some thought to this, I've decided to share with you that I tested positive for the coronavirus almost three weeks ago. Perhaps I am particularly robust 59-year-old, I like to think I am anyway, or was blessed with getting only a mild case of COVID-19, but after a week or so of what I would describe as a turbocharged flu, I came out of it feeling okay. Although I must admit, I didn't mind the quarantine as it gave me a chance to really recover. I'm speaking out in answer to the enormous amount of fear being generated by the pandemic, some of it entirely justified, and my heart goes out to everyone who has had to deal with real loss and real pain. But I want to let you know that it isn't always a killer, and we can and will beat this thing. Sending love to all my homies and fans in Italy, particularly in the UK, and the U.S. and everywhere in the world I have been lucky enough to visit on my travels with Duran Duran. Cannot wait to be back on stage again sharing new music, some love, and some joy. Stay safe, stay connected, and get created. Love, John. Well, that's really cool that he came out publicly. I think it's great that people are coming out, uh, people are surviving this and they're coming out and saying so, and it just gives everyone else encouragement. So hopefully more people will continue to do that. Uh, I've got a little fun fact here about uh, Mr. John Taylor. Uh, You know, the the group, Duran Duran, was formed by keyboardist Nick Rhodes and bassist John Taylor, if you didn't know that. 
with the later addition of drummer Roger Taylor and after numerous personnel changes, guitarist Andy Taylor, that would make three Taylors in the band, and lead singer Simon LeBon, which was the band's most commercially successful lineup. Now, none of those three Taylors are related. Three Taylors in one band and none of them are related. John Taylor's actually full name is Nigel John Taylor. And Ordinary World, that's like my favorite Duran Duran song. Just thought I'd throw that out there. And guys, I put this news out there because I thought we were way overdue for some positive stuff. So there it is. But that will wrap my rock news for this Thursday. And if you like my rock music news, then my Tuesday and Thursday shows, 7.30 p.m. on both nights, are the place to be. Like I said, we won't be in the studio for a while, but we are going to be transmitting from my uh, home uh, here in the woods in an undisclosed location. <laughs> if you like rock and roll history, then you can turn on and tune into my daily dose of rock music simply by checking out my daily dose playlist on my YouTube channel. Once again, it's youtube.com bar side jive live. It is time for something you've been waiting for. That would be my live music showcase. All right, my live music showcase is sponsored by Hip and Hippie. Hip and Hippie is a planet-loving company known for its high-quality, earth-friendly, 100% recyclable candle line and natural body care products. It's no wonder eco-supporting people love Hip and Hippie, hipandhippie.com. Well, guys, as I told you, my guest today is Joe James. He's an Austin, Texas-based singer, songwriter, and guitarist. Joe James has a gift of entertaining the crowd. His retro style incorporates elements of blues, neo soul, R&B, and funk. Joe delivers smooth grooves and soulful vocal expressions with a touch of blues guitar. From heavy hitting stages to intimate heartfelt performances, Joe James continues to captivate audiences in a powerful way. You may have seen him featured on season 17 of The Voice. And if you didn't, shame on you, you should have seen it. I guess you can go back, right? I mean, they're like online. Joe has performed at festivals with greats like Leon Russell. Wow, that's huge. Dr. John, the fabulous Thunderbirds, and Robert Randolph. He's also backed Robert at the NOLA Festival and played guitar for Capitol Records pop artist Fletcher. Joe also received the Honor Award at the 100% Music Songwriting Contest and was nominated for Soul of Austin Award, I should say the Soul of Austin Award at Austin Armadillo Awards. John Legend says a little bit about Joe, like great raw talent and voice is lovely to listen to. That's huge. And Blake Shelton says, I love Joe's voice. Well, Blake doesn't beat around the bush, does he? All right, guys. Well, let's welcome Joe James to Barside Jive Live. How's it going, Joe? DC, thank you for having me, man. I'm glad man, to be it's my the pleasure. Show. You know, Joe, normally we would be in the studio. You'd come in. You know, it'd be a totally different scene. But, uh, hey, we're going to deal you know, with what we have to work with, but uh, uh, hope sometime you're in town, I can get you in the studio. Yes, absolutely. I, I would love that. But yeah, we got to, we got to do what we got to do for right now, I guess. You know, Joe, I got to tell you that uh, there are some advantages from doing this from home, though. You know, I mean, I get to drink out of my Hard Rock London Cup. Yeah. Mug, mug, mug with my favorite drink. Because you know, in the studio, we can't drink in the studio. Uh, well, 
we have to have lids and straws. Got it. Yeah. But, See, uh, there, there are advantages. There are right some advantages. Yeah, uh, absolutely. There, any there's shoes on. I, you know, nah, I'm, you got I'm, no shoes. You got I'm doing pants. a Ronnie Van. Yeah, doing a Ronnie Van Zant thing. You know. Yeah, but, shoeless. But you got pants on. I'm not gonna tell. <laughs> <laughs> That's another advantage, man. You know, I do. wear free I, pants if you don't want to, man. It's awesome. <laughs> hey, you know what else? The studio, Jay keeps that studio hotter than hell. So I've got my freaking ceiling fan going. It's nice and cool. I, it, it, the temperature is way down, probably about mm, 69, just where I like it. And, uh, hey, it's, it's all good, man. That's perfect, so, man. There are some advantages. But I do miss the... I do miss being with you guys in the studio, the, you know, the, the, you know, the, you know, I used to get a lot of enjoyment from guests being live. And then not only that, but uh, the, of course, the audio, the, you know, all that stuff is so much better, yeah. you know, than what I've experienced doing this. But anyway, so man, what's going on in your life? Man, I've just, um, actually, it's, it's funny. Every, the live shows have stopped. Uh, yeah. for completely, you know, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. which is a pain. Um, yeah. But I, I'm releasing a new, a new single this, this Friday on April 10th called, called Love Right Now. And so we've been working with, with PR and we've been busy this whole entire time. So it's, it's, uh, I haven't had a chance to have that like downtime to, to be like, oh man, what am I going to do? And I also adapted to the whole situation. We've been doing Facebook live streams and, and, and trying to connect with our supporters and our friends and family and that way. Right. Um, just so we don't go, cr so we don't go crazy. Right. You know, I mean, like, you know how it is. Like, I feel like I'm, if, I, if I stop doing anything, I'm going to go completely nuts. I know. You know. I know. Oh, someone suggested, we just don't do the show for a while. And I'm like, no, fuck that. I'm, I'm doing my show, man. Every Tuesday, yeah. Thursday, I'm not stopping. But, but, but you guys, I mean, you guys, I mean, what are you doing financially? I mean, it's got to be killing you. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, it was, it, it was a, a week and a half of figuring out like, okay, how, how are we going to make this work? And then we, to see the thing pop up and um, we just ask for donations as we entertain you. Right. And, and so far, um, so far it's been, it's been fantastic. I mean, I'm, I'm so thankful for the Austin community and, and, and all of the, the supporters, you know, all over Texas and, uh, you know, around the world too. I mean, we've, we've been able to um, financially get by just from the, the live streams that we do every weekend. I do a, a, a live stream called Saturday Night Soul Singing with Joe James and 8 p.m. Central Time. And um, it's on Facebook, Facebook live stream. And people have been tuning in and I'll just throughout the show, I'll tell them, Hey, if, if you're digging it and if you can throw a virtual tip in the jar and it's been, everyone's been amazing. I actually did something uh, this past Friday where I, I took, I took a step back and raised money for our community here in Austin. So I, I took two venues, two, two artists, two musicians and, and tried to, to get, my goal was 600. Uh, to give them each a hundred bucks, um, and that we made way over a hundred bucks, way over six hundred. So it's been great, man, and I've wow. been really thankful. And the yeah, the community has, has been awesome, and it's really shown me, you know, you know, that from this, I think we're gonna have appreciation uh, for each other and for live music and for going into a studio to to do an interview and that that experience that that I love. Right, you know? right. So. We're gonna have a completely different, uh, pre a more of a pr appreciation for a handshake or a hug oh, or going yeah. into, uh, going into the studio or it's gonna be it's gonna be great when we get out of this thing. And I, I yeah. think it was almost like the universe, kind of pressing the reset button yeah. for us to to go. Okay, yeah, let's stop the bullshit and like, you know, we're all in this together. Right. Let's appreciate the small stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, and when you go through something on this massive scale, you know, with all the emotions, you know, the fear and, and, and all the, the struggles, the financial thing, and realize that really everybody's affected different levels, but everyone is affected by it. I just think, you'll, you know, you know, 
I, I wish it never happened, but now that it has, I think we'll be a lot stronger, a lot more appreciative, a lot more thankful on the other side, you know, for not just the things we have, the things we've been blessed with, but the people, you know, that yeah, totally 100%, man. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree in what you say. Um, i tell you what, if you don't mind, Joe, let's, uh, let's get right into some music and why don't you play something for us right now? Oh, heck yeah, man. Um, I'll play, this has become the new normal, hasn't it? Like you just play it in front of a computer and like, yeah. You know, oh yeah. <laughs> the, the live streams and like, you know, I've done a few, uh, few other in interviews and it's like, all right, play us something. But I, I just missed that connection, man. I wish I was like there with you. Oh man, I know. But, uh, well, we will, we'll do it live. Yeah, yeah bet you. Absolutely. This is a song called uh, Sixth Street that I wrote years ago and it was off my first EP. Um, and it's basically when I got to Austin, you know, we played the Dirty Six, the bars. Oh, and, yeah. um, and I had this um, experience of, at that time I was feeling a little depressed. I was going through something and I, I myself thought, isn't it crazy how people could feel completely alone in a place that is completely crowded and so lively? Like you can be around so many people and feel like you're the only one there. So that's what this song is, is about. And it goes like this. Hey, Sixth Street, I need to get home to my bed. But damn this whiskey. Think that it's gone to my head. Well, hey, do you miss me? Do you even know I am? It's been a long night and I'm just trying to fight. Feeling that I get when I think of you. I need another drink to drown this blue. Take me to the river Wow, my pain Yeah, babe And won't you make me feel Won't you make me feel Yeah, make me feel Hold again Ooh, yeah, babe Goodbye, sunshine. The sun, the moon's calling my name. Well, damn these street lights about to drive me insane. Yeah, I'm gonna miss me, babe. I won't even cross your lane. It's to another night where I'll just try to I try to find, babe. Feeling that I can win. Think of you. I need another drink to try this blue. Well, take me to the river and wash my pain. Yeah, babe. And won't you make me feel? Won't you make me feel? Yeah, make me feel. Way I did when love was younger, but it's over now. And the room is getting darker, and the pain is growing stronger. Yes. I need another drink to drown this blues, babe. Yeah, won't you make me feel? Won't you make me feel? Yeah, make me feel. Hey, Sixth Street, I'm finally home in my bed. 
day on this whiskey is finally gone to my head. That's awesome, Joe. You, you know now I've felt a little pain on 6th Street, right? Have you? Oh, brother. <laughs> Let me hear it, man. I, man, I used to uh, have to travel to Austin. Uh, actually, I did some lobby, lobbying work in Austin years ago, years and years ago. Uh, in fact, I spent one whole legislative session there. Lived in the Omni Hotel and... Uh, and uh, spent a lot of time on Sixth Street. So yeah, oh man, <laughs> what a great place! You can see anything you want to see right there on that one piece of piece of street. The good and bad, man. <laughs> the, good, the good, the bad, and ugly. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, yeah. Well, what a crazy place, man. It's crazy great, place. Man. Uh, awesome song, man. You know, God, do you like John Mayer? I love John Mayer. Yeah, yeah, I love him, man. Yeah, you know, and I, I hate making comparisons, but you're John Mayerish, man. Hey, I mean, I'll take that. That's a huge compliment. That guy's a fantastic songwriter. Yeah, fantastic guitar player. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you, man. Oh, so are you. So uh, it's good stuff, man. Good stuff. Um, so tell me how this music thing got started for you and I don't want you to start you know when you're in your first band I want you to go back to like I don't know when it when it first happened what were you you know still in diapers or were you know were you eight I mean you know when did it happen yeah man I, actually it's funny I was eight years old uh but wow. I, I started playing bass guitar at the age of of eight my dad uh is a bass player so we okay our um we had a very musical household. So my dad played bass. He had bands in and out the garage all the time. So um, what, what kind of music was he playing? He was actually playing um, like rock and roll. It was like, like eighties rock. And then it moved into more of just like um, maybe pop rock type stuff. And like that, that was his jam. Yeah. Um, and he, yeah. So I started there and I started playing bass cause I wanted to be, like my dad, you know, so right. it was, you should, like me with a, a little kid with a, you know, eight year old with a huge bass. Oh, yeah. Funny. But I was so determined, man. And I just fell in love with with music, just sitting there in the middle of the floor while there was like a double kick drum set and my Marshall stack and like, you know, my dad's huge ampeg, you know. And so it was like, <laughs> it was, it was like, that was better than playing with my toys and everything i just got i felt electrified as an eight-year-old like man this is this is what i want to do all the time and that was my version of like that's what i thought play like playing was like going out and riding the bike or playing with your friends i'm like no playing is playing right <laughs> you know? and right. so it started there and then i i moved on to playing the drums um because i thought they were badass and you know the drummer had double kicks and I'm like, this is like, the, this is like the real man's instrument yeah. because you get to hit stuff really hard, you know? Right. And so I started playing, um, I started playing that. And then I started playing guitar at the age of 13. Um, and it's funny enough, I had somebody um, tell me that, I think it was one of my dad's friends said that I shouldn't pick up the guitar and play the guitar because everybody's a guitar player. I should just stick to bass and drums. And it's, it, there's some truth to that. Yeah. And I'm so glad I didn't listen to him because like, this is the way I write. This is the way I express myself. This is who I am. And uh, this is my brand now. So it's like, can you imagine if I wouldn't have listened? Like where the hell yeah. would I be now? Um, yeah. But so yeah, it started there. And then I jumped in to, uh, playing drums for um, the church for a worship group and I was playing drums for the worship group for about four, 14 years. Cause my dad became a pastor and then he was like, there should be child labor laws by the way. But no, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he became a yeah. pastor and he was like, oh, you're a great drummer. You're on the drums for free. Yeah. Jesus will pay you or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, He still hasn't, I, I send him checks all the time. I send him bills all the time. <laughs> uh, 
but uh, no, so I did that for 14 years. And then I ended up going to college uh, right after high school. I went to Musicians Institute in, on Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California. And I was there for about two years and went to GIT for Guitar Institute of Technology. And oddly enough, like I went there as a like total rock and roll, like metalhead. And I still am a metalhead. Are you? Roll. Yeah, it's still, that's, it's, my, it's still my like guilty pleasure, man. But um, that's not what you're playing. I know. And I, so I went in and I went and I was taking these elective class, classes like a vocal elective, um, blues elective class, uh, these funk and jazz soul. Because I just, I've always been super open minded with everything. So I wasn't like, I'm a metalhead. Screw you guys, you know. So I was like, right. I want to learn everything. I want to be the I want to be the best that I could be. So sure. when I dove into the and I've always loved O Town and stuff like that. It was my dad was the rock guy. My mom was the R and B soul Motown. So I had that, like the best of both, both worlds. Now wait a minute, what's your mom play? My mom didn't play anything. She was just a huge admirer of like oldies and in Motown and stuff. Okay, like okay, yeah. So then I went to, to Musicians Institute, took those elective classes, um, and then just fell in love with the blues and with soul and funk music, so much so that I was like, this is like, I get a feeling that I, from playing this music, and it, I could be more expressive with what's in here with this music than I, I felt I could with any other. Uh, and it was funny because my blues elective, uh, class, the teacher in the blues elective class, he was, uh, he plays for um, war. His name's oh. Stuart Zeft. He's a guitar player for war. Yeah. And so, so he was a hard ass man. Like <laughs> he was, was riding us like nobody's business. And it was just a damn elective class, <laughs> but he was like, we'd play and I'd be trying to shred and, you know, go crazy and do like finger tapping and all, you know, yeah. it's like, stop that shit. Um, and he was like, if you can't play just one note and express yourself with that one note, like get out of my class. So basically he, he was that type of guy, but he also sat me down and was like, look, I know you want to be like a rock and roll metal guitar player. And you could do that if you want, but I feel like your phrasing and the way you bend your notes, like you'd be such a great like in the way you rhythm because you play drums like rhythmatically like funk and soul and that's your jam and you'll you right. you know that'll be your career and you'll make a good living and a good career out of it and I was like okay he's like you're not gonna make money playing metal music by the way but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's how it all started and from there um I didn't end up finishing school I went right into working uh, at a few studios and then doing a lot of session stuff and a lot of writing. And then I uh, started, I jumped in and out of bands. Um, and then I moved here to Texas. I jumped in a band called The Dirty Good up north in, the, uh, well, south for you guys, but up north for me, uh, the T Temple Belton area. Yeah. And, um, and I started playing with those guys and I was the little band and guitar player. And that lasted for about maybe a year and a half to two years and then the band split and I went solo and moved to Austin. So I've only been doing like my Joe James thing um, for about two and a half years maybe. Um, and we just hit it hard. Like we took, we, we said if we're, if we're gonna go solo, do a solo thing, take all the songs you've written for other people, the songs you've written for yourself and we'll build this brand um, me and my wife, I'm talking, when I say we, it's me and my wife do this, but uh, we said, we're just, we'll just go head first in, the, in this whole thing, you know, no matter how much it costs, no matter uh, how many, how much time, like, we're just going to hit this thing. We're going to go like a freight train, man. We're going crazy. We're going the full steam ahead. And that's what we did. Right. Right. Yeah. Did, the, did, the, did the wife not want to come on the show? Um, no, she, she is, she is background, man. She's like, she's, she is such an introvert. She's like, she'll book the show. She'll, she helps with, she, uh, we work with like PR. She's like, yeah. don't get me. I, I can get her on camera sometimes like for promotional stuff. I'm like, please, yeah. this, 
the, like the the next uh, release that I'm doing is is uh, songs inspired by her. So I'm like, you have to be on some of this shit. So, right. you know, so right. you can't just be talking for it. Right. Yeah. I had this one. I had this one guest one time, and I told him before the show. I said, "Hey, uh, did you want to bring your?" Because he his wife was coming with him. Yeah. To the show. And I said, uh, did you want your wife to get on camera? He goes, oh, no, no. Are you sure? He goes, yeah. I said, he's a real serious guy, too. And I, so I knew this would play well. And I said, well, you know, uh, here's a – we kind of have this rule that you, if you bring a spouse, you know, we give them their fair time on camera. And if you're not willing to do that, that's okay. You can just describe her for us on camera. You can just describe her, you know. And he's like, oh, no, man, I can't do that either. <laughs> So, <laughs> All right, that's cool. uh, he would he, he didn't want to describe her especially with her sitting there so, yeah describing you like that'd be hilarious man yeah yeah but uh so that's very cool um so your mom she just to music like you big music fan your dad rock and roll is he still a pastor uh yes he is still a pastor um in southern california has a church out there oh okay okay yeah. Cool. Brothers or sisters? I have um, one brother and two sisters. Do any of them play? Sing? No, surprisingly. Um, really? You were the only one? I was the only one. And we can't, our, the, the musical in the sense of my dad, his uh, pianist, and we have a lot of cousins that are musically inclined. I have a cousin that is uh, instrumentalist like like myself plays drums, bass, guitar, piano. Um, a couple of our cousins play guitar. So, yeah, but none. It's funny that none, no yeah. one from my my dad except for me, right? Um, you know, went down the music path. It's yeah, kind of weird. Yeah, I guess that's why I'm his favorite. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, good reason to. Hey, so like. What is your contribution to keeping Austin weird? My contribution to keeping Austin weird? Oh man, um, I don't know. I mean, just being who I am, which I'm super, you know. You're super weird. Super weird. So I just, I, I think my contribution is just like being exactly who I am all the time, not changing for a damn person any record label, just, just getting up there and shaking my ass on stage and, and providing that funky, soulful music that I do. And that, that's my contribution of keeping it weird. There you go. Not getting up there naked or anything. I mean, that would yeah. be super weird. Yeah. <laughs> now you might not wear pants in your home studio, but <laughs> um, yeah, Austin is such a crazy place. I love it because it's so crazy, but um, yeah. great place to people watch. Um, Tell me now, do you normally do a lot of solo stuff or do you play with a full band or what? Um, I do a little bit of both, but it's mostly a full band. I have a um, me on guitar vocals, then I have a keyboard player who does backing vocals, um, uh, a backing, a female uh, backup singer, bass player, drummer. And we usually do that thing. And that's, that's my... Um, that's my bread and butter. That's the jam right there. Uh, but I do sometimes get on and do solo stuff and uh, sometimes duo, but I prefer to have uh, my band. Okay, tell me who they are. I have Xavier Gonzalez Jr. on the keys and backing vocals, and he's a super cool guy here in Austin. Um, I have Rob Chase on the bass, great bass player. Great person, great human being. Um, and then I have Chris the Williams on the drums. And they call him the foot because you don't even have to mic that that damn kick mic, man. Is that like, right? Goes, kuh, kuh. Yeah, every time. Uh, and he's amazing. He's the sweetest dude ever. Um, and then I have Courtney Santana, the amazing Courtney Santana on, on backing vocals. And she, her and I work together all the time. Um, with a bunch of diff different projects. She has uh, she has a few things she does uh, for the Austin community where she helps people that are in uh, abusive relationships get out of the abus abusive relationships and find a sanctuary and, uh, you know- Oh, that's awesome. Get out of it and like basically recover from what they're going through. So I help her sometimes with a little bit of that stuff. Uh, she does all of it, but I, I share and I, you know, I, I 
I do my best social media to like share whatever she shares. But she's fantastic. She does a lot for the community and a great, great singer. Has her own own band as well. Oh, okay. Down, and she she kills, man. Right, right. So you guys go by the uh, uh, Joe James band. Yeah, it's just it's just uh, just Joe Joe James. So um, okay, but they're they are my they are my band. It's kind of like Johnny Lang has his his band that he brings out all the time. That's his guys, right. and, you know, just like uh, John Mayer with. Pino Palladino, Steve Jordan, uh, yeah. it's John Mayer, but everyone knows those cats are in the back. So it's kind of the right. same, so right. kind of the same thing. Yeah. Well, I just want to make sure we get it right. So people go to search for you. They, they find you. Tell me, um, what is the best song that you have ever written? The best song that I have ever written, man, that's like telling me to, to pick a favorite child. <laughs> um, not, not to plug, uh, my upcoming release and my upcoming project, uh, and to plug it, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, it's the the songs that I, I wrote for this upcoming project. Do you mind if I, I dive into? To, no, to, no, 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 no. Okay, so I um, so my wife was diagnosed with with uh, with a, a disease called an autoimmune disease called ulcerative colitis, uh, and th that it affects. 3.1 million people in the USA. And it's, uh, she was, um, she was diagnosed 2013. Um, well, she fell very, very ill September of 2019. And I wrote these specific songs for her. And I wrote them from a place of, of basically reminiscing about because she felt really ill. She lost 25 pounds. She was in the hospital for, uh, mm -hmm. in and out of the hospital for it. Um, it was it was a it was a bad time. So I just reflected on how much of an inspiration she's been to me and to my music and to the career and and the you know the defeat that we were feeling at this moment and also the triumph of when she came out of it and like how we felt. Um, so I started writing these specific songs. Um, and I ended up using this platform uh, to bring awareness to, to, to one, honor her uh, mostly, but then to also bring awareness to Crohn's uh, an invisible illness, an invisible disease where you look fine on the outside, but on the inside, you know, you have ulcers all in your stomach, you're right. bleeding, and it's, it's, it's a, a lot of people don't like to talk about it, but, you know, there's a lot of people going through through that, so I decided to, in the process of of writing these songs and having this kind of tip of the hat to, to someone who has been a huge influence in my my music career and it has been a, a driving force, uh, also try to bring awareness to that disease that kind of uh, brought forth these songs. And the songs aren't about the disease; the songs are about her. Right. But I decided I think it, it would be a good thing to use this platform to say. Hey, there's people that deal with this stuff. They sometimes can't even get out of bed or go to work or they feel like shit or, you know, and, and you say, you don't look like shit because, you know, you're not whatever. And you're like, no, these people battle with it, you know, autoimmune disease. And especially right now, right. With the coronavirus, like these oh. people are, are hiding because they're like, man, yeah. they can't see their families. They're like, don't come near me because if you get me sick. I can't I, hide. Yeah, I can't. So, um, so these songs, to answer your question, are the best songs I've ever written because I felt like I went like so deep, even into a dark places uh, in my soul and reached out and just started pouring everything out uh, because I was so vulnerable during months. So, um, and I, I feel like God and the universe just, just made it to almost to where I wrote these songs for uh, what I was talking about, Crohn's and colitis for my wife and, you know, to bring awareness and blah, blah, blah. But it ties into what's happening right now, like so perfectly uh, that the songs that, the song I'm going to be releasing this, this, um, this Friday called Love Right Now just kind of touches on that thing of like, you know, right now we're not able to, to hug someone or, or touch someone or have that camaraderie in person and uh, like you 
the disconnect and, and you, now you now you start to think we won't need any any love when we're gone or when we're not on this earth right so we need to to show that love but we have these people here you know, right. here with us like your friends your family like call them up like you can't hug them right now but, but call them up facetime them you know uh show the love right now we need that we need love right now you know this this is what I feel like the world needs is, is more of, of that type of thing, us encouraging each other and uplifting each other and loving each other during this this um, this crazy, you know? So yeah, these songs are definitely the the highest point. And I feel like vocally I like I I get I get goosebumps listening to my own songs, which never ever happens. I'm always <laughs> yeah, like right. critiquing the songs like yeah, uh, that, I could have added a guitar. I could have added a guitar, another right. guitar, you know. Right. Um, but these songs, I feel, they're perfect. Like they they get the st they get the message across. And when I wrote the songs, um, and performed them, recorded them, I wanted the I wanted people not to just listen to them, but more f feel them. And so that's with every other thing that I've done, it's, there's some feeling there, of course, because when, when I sing, I, I, I sing with, with feeling, like I, I dig down deep and I, my all, but with these, these songs, I feel that that's the, that is the statement of just letting, letting it sink in, letting the words speak, feel the music, the words, the, the vocal, the melodies. I want people to feel it. Right. Yeah. So yeah, these are my favorite songs, man, for sure. Well, why don't you pick one and play it? Oh man, right now? Okay. <laughs> yeah, right now, Joe James, right now. <laughs> and by the way, I just want to tell people that are going to watch this that to learn more about uh, IBD, which is inflammatory bowel disease, you can visit um, Crohn's and Colitis Foundation.org and find out about that because maybe someone in your family right. is dealing with it and is too embarrassed to talk about it and doesn't want to, you know, be a burden. Um, so yeah, check out Crohn's and colitis foundation.org. Well, um, thank, so thank you for this, sharing that. Yeah, of course, man. Um, this song is the, this is the one we're going to release this Friday, April 10th. This one is called right now. It goes like this. You'll feel it. Like bare days are from the ceiling The pain inside your mind is never feeling I said, baby, I'll be right by your side Ooh, ooh I see you I said, love is not a thing So I will show you Don't you wait until there's nothing To hold on to, babe Remember what you said that night, yeah, yeah. Said we won't need any love when we're gone. Keep strumming my heart with your song. Cause life doesn't last very long. We won't need love when we're gone. So love right now. September, it changed a lot, but it was for the better. We're stronger now, more powerful than ever, baby. Remember what we said that night, oh, that night, baby. Said we won't need any love when we're gone. Keep strumming my heart with your song, yeah. Life doesn't last very long. We won't need love when we're gone. So love right now. I said love right now. We won't need any love when we're gone. Keep strumming my heart with your song. Cause life doesn't last very long We won't
funniest thing that's ever happened to you the funniest thing like in general or like on stage either um shoot god I, i've had a lot of fun <laughs> in my life. um i can tell you one that comes to mind i think i always share this story it's it's hilarious but um when i was living in california uh, we were playing a, a venue called the public house and talking and rolling had too many too many drinks. Um, or actually, I got one drink, but it was like an oatmeal stout. And it was, it was like that. The cup was like this big. And it was just thick motor, motor oil beer, you know? Yeah. And I just thought it was cool. And I was like a, a buck 50, weighed a buck 50 back then. So I downed it really quick. Went on the stage, grabbed my Stratocaster. We're rocking. And I got up onto my amp and was just doing my thing and started to wobble. And I went, backwards no. to the drum set and everything yeah no and, uh, way i didn't feel a thing but uh it was uh, but i'll tell you what type of amp it was it was a fender uh hot rod deville and if you know anything about like like amps like uh fender amps the spring reverb in those damn things if you even you know cough on it right it goes bang right so imagine it just falling flat oh, man. <laughs> it, was, it sucked so bad but no. it was so funny and my i looked over at the drummer i knocked like half of this kid over and he he was like dying laughing because i mean i mean what could you do at that point but just laugh well, i guess yeah, so that i guess the song stopped right the, <laughs> the song definitely <laughs> the song stopped yeah <laughs> <laughs> so what'd y'all do? Um, <laughs> so the crowd that night, I mean, the crowd usually when we play, play funky soul stuff, yeah. people are up and dancing and grooving and having a good time. That night in particular, the crowd decided to be like overly groovy and funky and dancing. <laughs> so the whole freaking place was on the dance floor. <laughs> You know, and we're oh, up by the stage. So that's why my, my adrenaline, my excitement was so high. I was like, yeah, I'm going to give these people a show. And so I like jumped on my amp. So it was, it was, it was really awkward, but funny to hear the crowd laughing. Yeah. Was a little, you know, like kicked my ego down a little bit, but it was, yeah. still, it was still, we, we had a good laugh, picked the amp back up and was able to like, you know, pick right, pick back right up into the song. So wow, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, man. but it, but it, but the whole fall thing wasn't intentional though. Oh hell no, man! No, <laughs> no not at all. I I would not want to fall from that height because I Fender um, Hot Rod Devils they they stand pretty tall, so they're 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 more tall than than wide. Right. Like six. Uh, they have four ten speakers in them, so they're they're tall, they're heavy as hell. So I was up there, you know, and yeah, it was. Um, it was yeah. Really, you no, know, I definitely did not want to fall. <laughs> yeah. 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 So you said, uh, okay, so your wife, you guys got kids? Uh, we have a, a fur baby, Mr. Lennon, like John Lennon. We have a, a chocolate. Chocolate Lab German Shepherd. We call him a Chocolate Shepherd. Do you? Oh, okay, cool. And his name's Lennon? Yep. Yes, sir. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, as a musician, I guess you're a full-time working musician, right? Yep. So, what is the biggest challenge that you've had to overcome? Um, I think I th it's that it's that hump of of get, it's that bump of getting over like you're creative and you're a business. 
So it's trying to get over that hurdle and that hump of just like meshing those two together and start treating it like a business and a brand. Once you get into that mindset, you become, you start to work and you start to hustle and you start to, to book gigs, you start to write, you start to, to get music uh, syncing and, and licensing and stuff like that. Right. Um, you get into that mindset once you start treating it, treating it like a, like a business. So I think that for me was the hard part to kind of, kind of separate those, but also join them together somehow, like to know that I can still be creative and I write songs and treat this like a full blown business, an entrepreneur uh, that's trying to build a brand. Right. Um, and that was, that was a, a, a hard one for me to, and I think it's a hard one for a lot of artists and, and musicians to, to kind of face the fact of like, okay, if I, I really want to make a living out of, out of this, uh, from this, from playing music, I have to start thinking about this. You have to put on many different hats, producer hats, engineer hats, um, performing artists, songwriter, uh, giving lessons, um, syncing music to, for film and movie, uh, film and TV. Like you, you have to put on all those if you want to make a living until you get a record deal and you shoot up and you, you know, have someone else deal with all the other, all that bullshit. But until then you got to hustle and, and, uh, and work your butt off, you know? That was the thing for me to, to get to that point of like, okay, I, I, I have to put in the work. I can't go on some TV show and like, act like that's gonna skyrocket my career. Like I, I, ha I have to skyrocket my career. Right. You know? that, was the, that was the thing for me. Right, right. Have you ever met any of your heroes? Um, Yes, yes, I have. I um, so I've met S Steve Vai, as I told you, I was like a, a shredder metal guitar player. Right. Uh, and I've met Steve Vai. I've met. Um, I actually met Stevie Wonder at the NAMM show uh, very quickly, and he had a big entourage. Oh and yeah. I got to somehow sneak in there and like shake his hand really quick, so that was cool. Um, yeah, I've met. Oh, I've, I've met John Legend. I, I love John Legend. I right. to meet him. And Blake. Um, and Blake. I love Blake too. Blake, I love Blake's personality. Yeah. Like, I love his music too. I love his music as well. But he seems like a guy, it's just completely real, you know? Yeah. Like there's no, um, there's no bullshit there. Uh, he's, he's down to like, earth, man. Yeah, absolutely. In a big uh, way, yeah. So I would say, uh, I would say those people, that, that's what pops into my head. Uh, and Robert Randolph, I was, I'm a huge fan of Robert Randolph. So being able to back him and, you know, on stage. Right. And he was the sweetest guy too. Uh, we got to hang out with him in his, his dressing room, in his green room. And he was the, the sweetest guy. So I've been lucky enough to, everyone that I've met thus far has been, amazing and it was it wasn't like that that one that you know having a fear of meeting your idol because they might be an asshole right um, yeah so I, i've always had that fear but i've i've been lucky enough that everyone that i've i've met has been has been really cool they've been great my i want to meet paul mccartney one day but i don't know how that's going to go because i probably will faint <laughs> <laughs> so that would be the one that would be at the top of your list oh that's right at the top of my list yeah man. i like i'm such a huge huge beatles fan my dad's a beatles fan yeah. and he got me into the beatles and we watched i would from when i when i could remember I, i'd be watching like beatles anthology and all that stuff yeah like, all this stuff about the beatles and like from from an early age i, I they were like they were it so i think meeting paul mccartney was just like definitely bring up a lot of emotion because my songwriting i i learned from them how to write songs you know yeah. like i would write i would play and learn beatles songs and learn melodies and how they their chord structures and how right. they ran out of stuff in the production and how they did backup vocals and added like certain uh how george martin would produce their albums like like that's that was 
that's the that's the bible for me you know and so um so yeah paul mccartney man I want to meet him, but I don't want to meet him at the same time because I, I don't know what I do. Hopefully, I would I would keep calm and be yeah be cool and collective. Yeah, I'm sure you would because you're a pretty cool yeah. guy. So I think it would. I think he'd be. Yeah, I think it'd work. But uh, well, that's cool. Yeah, I'm 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 a big fan of the Beatles. Yeah. I think the Beatles were the first actual rock and roll band that I ever heard. So they've been pretty huge in my life okay we're going to do a little lightning round here because we want to learn a little bit more about you and i don't want you to think about this too much so what's the first thing you drink every day water really mm -hmm. you're a healthy guy huh? i am yeah okay cool rain or snow rain believe in ghosts i do favorite type of food mexican and there you go can can you swim? I can. What's your go-to beverage? My go-to beverage, alcohol or, or non-alcoholic? Doesn't matter. Alcohol. I would say any in margarita. I love margaritas. Okay. Frozen or? Uh, I'll take them. Rocks. Anyways. My my wife likes them uh, on the. I think she likes them on the rocks. Uh, I'll take them frozen or on the rocks. I just love either. Okay. Either, yeah. Do you put ketchup on hot dogs? I do. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> How many piercings do you have? I have I have two. And tattoos. Um I have a, <laughs> a I have lot. Four. What'd you say? I have a lot. I have a, an arm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna make and it I, count. And then I have one right here as well. <laughs> I have a lot of them. Them. All right. Do you, do you own a gun? I do. Favorite color? Not gun. Orange. Orange? Orange, yeah. Man, my, my middle child, he loves the color orange. He, he wants an orange car. He wants orange this. Freaking don't code. You can't paint your house orange. Okay? You just <laughs> can't do it. All right. What's your biggest phobia? Spiders. I just killed one a while ago. Hate them. Seriously, it's craw crawling across my kitchen floor. Okay, mayo or Miracle Whip? I'm mayo. Yeah, good choice. Good yeah, choice. I, I don't think I've had Miracle Whip. I think we've, we actually make our own mayo. Do you really? Uh-huh, yeah. Like eggs and milk and you? Yeah, I think it's eggs, um, avocado oil, a uh, little bit of salt, pepper, and there's a few other things. And then oh, yeah, no milk in it. Um, I don't think my wife puts milk in it. She might. I don't know. But oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, we that's make cool. it. Yeah, that's cool. You know, Joe, I've got a lot of new talent. Uh, or I've had a lot of new talent on my shows, from, and uh, I'm just curious what the best advice that you would give somebody trying to break into this business would be um definitely i mean i'm speaking that they already have the talent and they they've worked they, they've they've worked their talent they've worked the craft um there's a few things i would say play a lot go out and play live learn how to work a crowd um because that's very important um and also learn the business like learn the business side of music because that's where a lot of us fall short is we think we're just going to go out there, play some gigs, and we're going to get signed and the world is going to be amazing and we're going to be right. the next whatever. But right. the fact of the matter is, no, you're not, but you can build a brand and you can have a, you can, you can succeed at this. I mean, you can, you can make a living and have a great career at playing music and being a performing artist, recording art, artist, songwriter, just learn the, the business side of everything. And just know you're going to have to spend a lot of time and a lot of money. Yeah. You know, get a credit card. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. It ain't cheap, is it? No, it's not cheap at all, man. And that's not, that's not, and I want to be real because I always watch, watch uh, some people when they're asked a, a similar question and they're just like you know practice and you do this but you got to remember there's people and i don't mean to slander anybody but like 
like Kesha, you know, she's yeah. not my cup of tea, but she's someone's cup of tea. Yeah. But she made it big. And I heard, I heard what she would do. She went out there and she was hustling. She broke into Prince's house and dropped her demo off there. Like she was just, she worked her butt off. Right. And that's the thing. It's like, and she also hired PR and she hired a bunch of, of people. So it's that type of thing. You got to know that if you want to make a, a mark, you want to make a dent, you're going to have to learn the business. You're going to have to spend the money uh, until you get to a, a, a you're, you're getting that money back. Right. Right. Like any, like any business. You know? Yeah, absolutely. You got to treat it like a business. Yeah. Right. Cause it is. So that's my advice. We're summed up, treat it like a business. Yeah. Like, like, like you're going into a business, you're opening up a business and build your brand. That's good stuff, Joe. I'd ask you about your schedule, brother, but uh, I'm sure your schedule's pretty empty right now with the, you know, this uh, COVID-19 thing going on. But I know you've got a release. Is this a single or an EP or what on Friday? Yeah, this this is a this is a single. Our schedule is is a little dead for live shows. Um, but other than that, we have a lot of things going on. We have a lot of releases. This will be a single that's coming out for the upcoming release uh, that'll be released this summer. We have a lot of videos and a lot of press that's gonna be following that. And we also do a live stream every Saturday uh, called Saturday Night Soul Singing with Joe James at 8 p.m. Central Time on my Facebook page. Um, so yeah, we still have, we. Like I said, I can't, I can't not do something, man. Right. Do. right. So we keep, we're keeping busy. And they, so they find you on Facebook under Joe James, right? Yeah. If you search up J O J A M E S, you'll find me. If you, if uh, you want to go to my website, you could find all the other social media, you uh, Instagram, just, just uh, search Joe James music. That's J O J A M E S music.com. And you can find me. Very cool. Joe, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Um, I, I can't wait till you can actually come to the studio when you're in Dallas and we'll do something there later on, maybe in the year, maybe in the fall. We'll see what happens. But uh, thank you so much for giving us this time and uh, being able to chat with you. Man, DC, thank you for, for allowing me on your show. And yeah, I can't wait to get into the actual studio and, and give you a hug. Yeah, absolutely, brother. Hugs, first thing on the list. I'm a hugger anyway, so just ask anybody that knows me. Hey, man, don't go anywhere. I want you to play one more. I want you to play us out, okay? Sounds good. Remember, guys, that all my content is on YouTube. Just search Barside Job Live. I want to thank Jay and Jimmy, our production team, for all the hard work they do behind the scenes to make these shows possible. And guys, we are going to get out of here. I want to thank you again for hanging out with Joe and I this evening. We appreciate your support of what we are doing here and hope that you'll share us with your friends, your family, your followers. And I hate this part of the show. I hate going, but it's time. But until next time, be kind to one another. Keep it real and keep on rocking. And Joe, it's all yours, brother. All right. I was born to leave you, what can I say? I've never been a wise one, never changed the moment for you. So how could you to? So girl, I see you looking, looking too. I don't play those love games. I always leave the feeling blue. Yeah, you know they do. When I come knocking at your door, baby. You know what I wanna do? I don't mind killing the dust. I don't mind up to no good. Take my time I step to you, babe. I don't mind, don't mind. Said I would be 
in mind for me. If you trust that we're not you, someone would be there to catch me. Someone like you. It's my attempt to play bass. Here we go. I don't mind. Kill it the dirt. I don't mind. Earth uh, do no good. Take my time. I step to you, baby. I don't mind. Don't mind. I said, I don't mind. Kill it the dirt. I don't mind. Earth uh, do no good. I do no good, baby. To you, baby, I don't mind, don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. James right here on Barside Child Live. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Hey, make sure you tell your wife, hey, for me. I definitely will, man. Okay. And uh, we appreciate her sharing you with us for a, an hour. Thank you, man. Thank you. You're welcome, Thank you. Joe. All right. Take care, brother. Stay in touch. Yes, sir. Funky. Jivelive.com. The zoo, the zoo gives you ride for the senses, for the senses, for the senses, for the senses.